Hello! Sadly, I messed up the audio on this one, so the first six minutes are more or less going to be skipped because of this. I apologize, but uh, I can say with a positive, on the positive, I'm now starting to take the audio mics a little bit more seriously. I'm actually trying to fix it, and if I can't fix it, I'm going to edit out as much as I can. So I do apologize, and I still hope you enjoy the video. I'm a little bit concerned that the first part here might have been without audio and do apologize. It's basically that I was appreciative of what I did here because it will show me how Rebels will work in, uh, well, Avazel. And also that basically we were prepared for everything here as well as we will probably very soon fight the Ottomans as soon as Truth's time runs out to get Georgia. And of course also it's very nice that we do have the, uh, the perks of those guys running around. Moving more troops over to uh, the New World, among other things. But I do find it very weird that if it wasn't without audio, because everything was working perfectly, I recorded the episode right before this one. It's just a feeling in the back of my mind, which I don't enjoy or appreciate. So hopefully that is all it was, just a thought in the back of my mind. But uh, we'll keep this going. I'm probably just going to wait right now until something interesting happens, and then I'll be uh, back with you. Currently, the Ottomans are conducting a war against Greece, and as you can see, they're winning. The parties in the war are basically, as you can see, Greece is war with the Ottomans, and the Ottomans on their side are war with just Greece. So it's a <clears throat> it's a one versus one war that the Ottomans are winning, well, rather easily, as you might expect. So uh, lost in mind and space. Well, apparently our conquistador has no sense of orientation because he got lost twice. Leave him, he'll have to find us this time. So, I guess we should just leave him. It's fine prestige. So, it seems that most of these events, there's someone that will give you 50 admin, diplomatic, or whatever points, and there's someone who will give you loss of prestige or death of the conquistador. Usually bad things, most of the time, but... Uh, the events that are good are actually rather, well, incredibly good, so I would not be too concerned about that. And I would actually advise anyone who does this to use the Hunt for Seven Cities to explore the new world, because it just gives some, well, pretty interesting and fun events, as well as, uh, I guess, some flavor to, uh, to the world here. Uh, once again, my guys here have uh, joined up together to uh, explore the uh, the lands, which is not the best thing. I should just send one force to do this, had I known this would happen. Uh, but let's go ahead here, upgrade diplomatic tech to level 28, join stock companies. With this, trade range increases by 20%, and trade efficiency increases by 10%. Currently, trade is 40% of our income. Let's see what it turns out now in a uh, couple of months after a 10% increase. It should be, uh, at the very least, a tiny bit more. 41.6% now, so uh, we're earning about 20 Dukes more a month. So, uh, can't really complain about that. It's a it's a decent amount. It went up from 80 to 90%, so that is probably why. But, uh, again, the re only reason why I'm really trying to earn money at the current time is that we can keep on doing the building project, which is uh, building barracks basically everywhere. There are actually rebels, revolutionaries in Bulgaria. This could be interesting. Uh, but as you can see, we're building... Again, I'm just building it indiscriminately. I don't care where the... Uh, where, well, basically where they would have the most use. Because the fact is that with my current income, I will be able to cover all my provinces with, uh, with these things. Because as you can see, Central Europe, completely finished. It's just this area and this area. And I gain a barracks every... Um, every second month so two months a new one so it's not a big deal that I just build everywhere and anywhere and with that said we'll just go back to waiting and see if uh, we end up at a point where something rather interesting happens well we can take the first expansion idea which we will because it's just so useful an extra colonist of course can definitely be helpful so uh, again we're just going to make sure that we colonize the entire area here because that is the area where the supposedly third, uh, our third, uh, well, our third uh, Georgia is. And of course we have to complete the uh, 
conquest of the original Georgia, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, poison Rock. Nine horses died from eating poisonous plants, and the expedition was forced to leave behind two more who were near death. A cursed place with only poisonous plants and venomous animals, and the conquistador regrets that they ever decided to camp there. A large rock formation provided shelter from the harsh winds that blew right through them, but Poison Rock, as it was named by the conquistador, is not a place for any man nor animal. So we'll have to continue by foot, which is bad. But uh, let's just go to region map mode here and see if we can figure out what is a part of. Uh, I would guess Georgia's Caucasus mostly. No, that would be a little bit too much. I think. Or perhaps. Yeah, it would be a little bit too much. <clears throat> so I guess just original Georgia's borders at the start of the game. I would guess. Uh, but I'll go back to waiting and see if uh, we get something to happen here. My old king finally died here, and as you can see, we have uh, Black News, the ability drop. We have pretenders thanks to his weak uh, legitimacy. It's 16. That is horrifyingly bad. They have ris risen up in terms, so the six regiments rose up to a 48,001. 464, though, so he is very good. And basically, stat wise, he uh, he's very, very nice, and I would prefer to have him for a very long time. Uh, if Poland. So, if the Polish king dies, there will be a succession war. He's 33 years old. That could be hilarious if I can get Poland in a union now. That would make my day, more or less, to be perfectly honest. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, but that wasn't really what I was supposed to do here. I was supposed to tell you that we're going to the war on Chero the Cherokee and uh, try and take the land. And we're probably just going to keep on taking down the Indians here, because I have no idea just how big uh, basically something needs to be before they declare war, a revolution if you will. Sherman is no longer a valid rival. Well, that's too bad. Oh, they're actually requiring me to come as aid as the Lord of Fate, basically. Which is fine. The enemy isn't really numerous. It's Switzerland, Lorraine, and some tiny other states. So, doesn't really take much. Let's just send a couple of armies to Switzerland, and that should basically be enough. 100,000 men, more than enough. Uh, just to be safe, though, we will send these guys to Aachen. And that should, uh, that should seal the deal. But, uh, boom. There we go. Cherokee has been uh, taken. And, as I said here, I think we will start hunting uh, hunting Indians because there are no good reason not to. They will help my, my course here a little bit in terms of trying to force a revolution, American one, if you will. I think that's what the achievement is about, not revolutionary France, for instance, although that could also definitely be a... Uh, that could definitely be the case. Which would make me sound like an idiot because, well, I'm creating trouble for myself in that case. But anyways, we will uh, just go for a quick war here against the uh, the natives, and we'll see how uh, things turn out. So the war with Burgundy is going very well. I don't really have to even do anything. That's how well it's going. As you can see, Milan sees this before I even got the chance. Burgundy is currently steamrolling everyone, and well. I'm basically more of support at this point, which, to be quite frank, I'm not a, uh, I'm not, I'm not negative of it. It's very nice to be more of support for once. It's, uh, it's rather helpful, to be perfectly honest. Don't have to sacrifice any troops, although my manpower has more or less recovered. I gain 8,000 troops a month, so it makes sense that it would. Austria just announced me as a rival. How dare they? Hurt my feelings like that. Uh, but as you can see here, the uh, war against the natives are over, or is over. And of course, it's a full annexation, because that will, uh, well, once again, everything will fall in under Florida. And if I just keep on basically taking the area here to make sure I get everything, things should be fine. There we go, Switzerland is out, Belize to Milan. So again, war is more or less over. I'm very tempted to just go ahead and declare war on Milan right now. 
I'm fighting a war with them. I thought they were out. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it would be hilarious if I could. But there we go. The rain war is over. I didn't need to do anything. And Burgundy took uh, three promises, making them look a little bit prettier on the map. So that's, at the very least, a positive. Let's go ahead and get the better relations, dude. And uh, we're going to end it here. Thank you for watching. Please have a comment, praise, criticism, and do if you like. And the next time, we will probably end up with uh, a war here against, I would presume, the Ottomans, who have actually con reconquered uh, the promise that I took the last time. So uh, we'll have to see how we want to deal with that. Albania, on the other side, still is not too fond of me. I can do a royal marriage and I can send a gift. So, uh, in a war here against the Ottomans too, we'll be able to at the very least give back three of their cores, which should help us out. And we can also, of course, probably hand back everything I gave them last time, which uh, probably will be a tiny bit helpful, since, uh, well, they now can most likely hold on to it. We'll just have to wait and see, though. We'll uh, figure that out next time. Bye.